What's going on, YouTube fans? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. On this episode, we're going to take it to Memphis 10, Memphis, Tennessee, and talk about a Memphis king that go by the name of Craig Pettis. Be sure to like, comment, share. Let's get right into it. Memphis 10, home of good food, good music, with legendary groups like 36 Mafia and new age rappers like Pooh Shiesty, Yo Gotti, and many more. I remember being young and feeling the Memphis vibes from Player Fly crowning me or Project Pat Life We Live. But in the trenches of Memphis, it's a lot that goes on. From pimps and hustlers, some say Memphis is and will always be against the city. On this episode of Hood Tales, we will be discussing a man that had the city on lock and the narcotics trade, Craig Petty's. Some say as a young man, Craig grew up and had it rough in his South Memphis neighborhood of Riverside. Growing up in church with his mother, young Craig had religion, but could see at an early age, he wanted to find the things in life. Ambitious and with a hustler spirit, he would absorb the game from some of the street guys in Memphis to put his own twist on it and figure out how to make it work for himself. In the streets, everyone has to start somewhere, but Craig clearly had an eye for the game. At a young age, and knowing how to network and rub shoulders with the right people. Working his way through the trials and trips of the streets, life fighting for power and respect. But in this rag the riches story, I'm sure Craig and his associates couldn't imagine how big the enterprise would get and connections that would be made in the streets. A good plug is the outlet to anything. The better connect you have, your chances of success grows and Craig eventually will gain the attention of a Mexican cartel for the way he conducted himself and got off product. Moving bricks of girl through multiple states, including Texas, Mississippi, North Carolina, Georgia, and of course, home base, Tennessee. With a team of people, money was flowing in on a different level. And Craig finally coming up was enjoying the fruits of his labor, expensive jewelry, luxury cars, beautiful women, and more. More money than he could even count with product coming from the best source, Mexico, being more potent, making it easy to make more profit. It was easy to sew up the streets of Memphis and have everyone cop from him or his people. They also had the grass by the bells. Nothing seemed out of reach for the young hungry hustler. After grinding his whole life, coming from nothing, nickel and diamond, it seemed like everything was coming together for Craig. But only in the dream world, the life of a dope boy would be so easy and simple. The fact his mother wouldn't even take a dollar from him calling it dirty money hurt, being that it's every young man's dream to finally have enough to spoil his moms. Also with a winning team and street politics, getting money and violence sometimes seems to go hand in hand. A legend Craig had a team of hitters to handle dirty work and take care of business on anyone that opposed of the organization or crossed that line. On one alleged situation, a 28 year old man was hit up in his garage near Shelby Drive and Hacks Cross while his kids were home. Another alleged situation, two men were allegedly ex ex executed in a car in Hickory Hill. Another man fatally hit in a restaurant as well. The streets of Memphis was turned into a battlefield. By this time, Craig had made it to the big leagues. His name was ringing bells, not just in Memphis, but different cities and states. With the cartel behind him, Stash houses all over, and what some say was filled with money and product, it seemed Craig's name started to ring as the biggest cane pan out of Memphis, making millions upon millions of dollars. Of course, eventually, an investigation would start, and feds would accuse Craig and 40 other people of allegedly running a criminal enterprise that was ruthless, doing whatever, and taking out whoever stood in their way, making Craig the head of the operation accusing the team of six murders and alleging Craig was the leader of one of the biggest drug trafficking rings they ever saw. Now that the heat was on, Craig and a few others would use ties to Mexico to their advantage, fleeing the country and running to Mexico with some alleged the show continued and he still called the shots and lived like a boss with more money than he could spend, personal trainers, chefs, and more. But eventually it would all crumble after building a multi-million multi dollar empire, the big man himself 
will face a judge and jury. Prosecutors painted Craig and the organization as monsters who messed up lives and hurt families. As the case was closing and Craig spoke on his behalf, he apologized for his alleged activity, but the judge showed no mercy and Craig was sentenced to life in a federal prison. Other co-defendants received different times for their alleged roles in the organization. I'm sure as a young man in church with his mother, Craig probably never saw this for himself. More of this story, no matter how much money, how well connected you are, how many people you got, when it falls, it all falls. Is living a rich, fast life worth life? Ask yourself that question, only you know. Y'all know my motto, man. We gotta succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tab. Man, salute to Memphis, man. You know, Craig Pettis, I'm not sure if y'all heard of him, but a lot of people say he was bigger than Big Meech. And a lot of people say, you know, he was plugged into that BMF organization as well. But man, when you on that kind of level, it come in different. You know, the money come different, the beef come different. You know, like when you got your whole state on lock and other states and you dealing with people all over the world and stuff like that, your name ring bells a lot quicker. And when them feds get on you, they get on you harder because the name of the game is money, you feel me? The more money you make, the more they can seize, the more it help them out. You know, it's crazy how everything work together. People don't understand like the feds, when they see stuff like money and cars and jewelry, they sell the jewelry, they sell the cars, it all go back to them. It go back to law enforcement. So it's like, technically, if you want to think about it in a different way, you working for them. Because if you fall, which most organizations do, when they seize everything and they take all your houses, all your money, all your cars, all your jewelry, it's going to them federal agents. It's going to help the division the they in. Or you feel me, they families, or you feel me, they might got a brother-in-law that need a car and they, t they send it through the auction and they tell him to bid on it. Now he got a Rolls Royce for $10,000. Stuff like that happens, you know? And you know it's messed up because Craig got a book out and you know, in the book, you know, he definitely apologized for his behavior, but he got life. Man, shout out to Memphis. Be sure to like, comment, share. I love y'all fam, I'm out.